Let's welcome David S. Zimmerman to Autism Live. There he is, David. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's so good to see you. I was just saying nice things about you behind your back, saying what a light you are in the, the Hollywood community um, for various and sundry different reasons. And I mentioned that you are an actor, uh, a director, a producer, a creator. You are um, an amazing person who really is here on Autism Live. We talk a lot about, you know, we have to get outside the autism community and get people who aren't necessarily um, a part of our community to see the light and include all of us. And I think you're the embodiment of that, really. You are somebody who is, has been working in, in inclusion in Hollywood for how many years has this been part of what you do? I'd say I started almost 25 years ago. Well, you are way ahead of the curve. You are uh, a scholar and a gentleman. And, and we should clone you because really, I mean, you're, you're what we're all looking for. Somebody who gets it and who is out there doing what you do and you're constantly including people who are marginalized and made to feel that they're different and not included. And you're just automatically including them. Without a lot of fanfare, I gotta say too, more people should be talking about what you're doing. So let's make sure we talk about what you're doing. Uh -huh. We have so many things to talk about, but let's talk about Meet the Biz first. Tell our audience what Meet the Biz is and how they can participate. Oh, well, Meet the Biz, you know, I started, quote, Meet the Biz, I'd say in 2008. Although I had been teaching with uh, the Media Access Office uh, for, God, probably 10 years before that. I first got into, quote, the community uh, when I first got to LA. I was waiting tables and um, I had this wonderful friend, Mary Rings, uh, the head of the uh, Born to Act Players. And she said, hey, come, come to my acting class. Finally got in, opened the door, and there was this beautiful family that I was with as an assistant to Mary for uh, 10 years. And um, uh, then ultimately, I got to create Meet the Biz, which included all actors. Um, I first started teaching actors with disabilities, but I was thinking, hey, we're all in Hollywood. Let's all do this together. So. Um, that's when I started it. And it's about, it's, it is about inclusion. And what I love, not just including the people and the actors and the performers and the talent that are in it, but it is by going and connecting with, I mean, we were at Inclusion Films, Joey Travolta's Inclusion Films for years, like several years. Um, and we did classes there. And then we we moved on and, and we had the, uh, we worked with Actors for Autism, Melissa Wolf, and and um, we were under their umbrella, and we did classes at the Writers Guild and the uh, the uh, Screen Actors Guild and and the Gay and Lesbian Center, um, Jane Wagner and Lily Tomlin. So we really want to just like, hey, look, look, it's it's all about all of us working together. So that's that's, and of course now we're at Performing Arts Studio West, which is uh, another wonderful family. So, and and for people who've, who've never heard, because you're saying a whole bunch of things that people are like, wait a second, slow down, because I'm sure that they're, they, I might want to be involved in this. Yes, um, yes. And so Meet the Biz, it, tell them, because it's, it's a little bit of a lot of different things. It's a class, uh, but it's also a show. Exactly. You interview people, talk about the whole thing. Well, you know, for, since since we began, they have been classes, at least three hours, if not four or more hours of classes um, uh, per session. We bring in people from the industry, like Lainey Kazan would come in and teach a, a four-week uh, acting workshop. And you get to, it's not just meeting the people. Some people say, I don't want to just meet people. No, no, no. You get to like work with these people you get to connect with these people and a lot of times people you know i mean directors writers we have danny woodburn coming in and teaching improv we have charlene tilton coming in and doing a class in fact she uh, but her and her daughter 
came in cherishly and they did a half acting class, half singing class. Jerry Jewell comes in, does comedy. So um, you come in and you learn from this. Of course, we're now in quarantine. Um, yeah. So now we, uh, I was asked by John who, John Pace is performing Art Studio West. He said, okay, we're gonna do online classes. And I was thinking, for me to do a class five days a week, looking at the camera and say, okay, put up your hand here. <laughs> but, you know, I really <laughs> like to see a couple people and, and say, okay, try that again. Yes, now you, okay. Now, yeah, yeah, now, how are you feeling? I like to really be in depth with people. So I thought, well, hey, I've been doing Meet the Biz. Let's continue it as a talk show. And then sometimes bring people on uh, to ask questions. And sometimes we do a little acting or singing or dancing on, on the show as well, but it's really connecting people. And the biz, at first I said, meet the biz. You know, I wasn't sure I liked the title, but now I love it because meet the biz is not necessarily the people who come on to the show, uh, which it has really turned into that too, which I love because you have a plethora of all different kinds of talents. Um, but it's also like when Lainey came in, to teach, for example, uh, she she said after her first class, she said, can I do this again? I love this. And she was addicted and she met the biz. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, they met Lainey who is in the biz, but she met the biz of all these wonderful actors that were um, not untouched. Un I forgot, I can't think of the term. Not, not- uh, Uncultivated? <laughs> well, I mean, some of them were, uh, some have been very cultivated. Um, you could say not, not used enough. And now as time goes on, um, and used is not a good word either. It's more of all working together, all getting out there and becoming- Undiscovered. Undiscovered. Uh, there we go, undiscovered. Uh, there we go. Orange yeah. brain. <laughs> yeah. We all have it. We all have it. I, well, I mean, I think, I think it's so amazing what you're doing. And I, and I love the fact that it's morphed into something that you can do and continue doing during quarantine. So for our viewers, and we have, we have people we want to shout out. We have people who are watching in Kenya and Nepal. This Ooh, morning. I love it. I know. Uh, and all throughout the United States and the rest of the world as well. But if they wanted to be able to access Meet the Biz, yes, you you've been doing some amazing interviews. And I know, you know, I'm uh, a gal of a certain age, and I was freaking out the other day because I saw the interview that you did with Julie Newmar, oh. um, who still looks stunning. She and for those of you who don't know, because you're too young, um, she was Catwoman. When I was a little girl, she was Catwoman. So this woman, and she looks stunning. She is rocking that white hat. Come on. Um, but, you know, that's just one of the many interviews. Where can they go to see these, David? Well, they can go. And these are all for, for everybody to see on PASW TV, which is on YouTube. So, okay. and when you go there, subscribe to that. You'll see other classes as well that you could take. Now, if you really wanted to get into the Zoom classes, the live ones, then you you could connect with Performing Arts Studio West and see how you could work that out to see okay. how you can get a part of that um, uh, while we're in quarantine and, and afterwards as well. But right now you could see all these by going a lot of the interviews and we come out with five a week. I mean, I've done more in the last six months and it's probably to keep me sane in <laughs> in this time by connecting with others like like we're doing right at this moment and yes. every day i get to talk to another friend of mine or of somebody who i haven't met before yet become friends with um because again it's such a such a small world i, I just i always say it's a little blue marble that we're all on so we yeah. just gotta keep working together well, and you are really good people. And um, I have to give a shout out to Joey Travolta because oh. he was the person who said to me, why have you never had David Zimmerman on your show? And I was like, I don't know. Why have I, I don't have David's, I don't, I was contacted. And he was like, stop it. You need to contact David Zimmerman. <laughs> and you immediately got back to me. And the more I have learned about you, I'm like, you know, you're amazing. I just want to say that. And, you know, there are some people, look, there's nothing wrong with doing just classes, right? 
But I got to say, you're also taking that and you're turning it into other things and you're putting your time and energy and money where your mouth is, as evidenced by some of the other projects that we're about to talk about. Let's talk about Honey Bunny. Tell the folks oh. at home what Honey Bunny is. Honey Bunny. Because well, it's so it's so wonderful, David. It hurts my heart. It's so wonderful. Oh, my God. It, uh, hopefully it heals the heart. <laughs> yes, but I mean, in the best possible way, it's yeah. just one of those things. Oh, anyway, so uh, we're going to put up the poster from Honey Buddy, but talk about it for uh, us. Well, this this it actually was a dream come true. Number one, I've known Blair Williamson and his amazing mother, uh, Gail, for oh, uh, probably about 25 years. And I was on the coach on the set, with on many sets with Blair. And, uh, you know, through... Um, the Disability Film Challenge and Nick Novicki. He has, you know, we've we've at Performing Arts Studio West and Meet the Biz have always had the, uh, hey, it's time for the um, a Disability Film Challenge. We had the meet and the greet every year. Well, they Nick kept on saying, let's do a film. When are you going to do a film? Finally, this year, when I heard it was documentary, I went, I'm going to do it this year. So. I and this had, is the Easter Seals. Yes. Uh, so tell them, because for our audience, they may not know about this film challenge. Tell the them just Easter a little bit. Easter Seals about. Disability Film Challenge. Incredible, incredible um, uh, event uh, every year that Nick Novicki created. And um, you have a weekend or a few more days, it depends what it is, to create a five to six minute short. Um, and every year they give you a new assignment. And this year was documentary. And right, the, right before you start too, they say, okay, you have to be sure you have these things within this creation and go. You have 48 hours or 50, whatever hours it is. And then, um, and this year was amazing because they had, I think, 87 films. People wow. did 87 films. And let me tell you, I watched all 87 and they were all incredible all mm -hmm. incredible and i mean you could go online to the easter seals disability film challenge and see these and it was such a joy because autom automatically i thought okay i'm gonna do this i'm gonna i'm blair williamson that's the first person popped into my mind now i've i've been working on on footage for this other film that we're we've been doing for years but for some reason i thought no 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 i want to focus on blair and i knew that Blair and Susie has been, have been together for years. And I said, this is what I want to create in a six minute love fest, not just for them, but for all of us. Because I've noticed that when I watch this film and when I first, when we first created it, we have a wonderful director, Jaden Barriel. And, and he, what was so great about it is Gail said, let's, let's, you know, I want to introduce you to this amazing family because Jaden has some footage. I myself had some footage. So we collaborated, um, got to work with his mother uh, who co-produced it, his father who edited it. And then we had the amazing music of Chris Hendricks and Trevor Bumgarner. Um, and, and well, the I music know, was beautiful. Oh my God, Chris is amazing. He's somebody you should have on too. Amazing uh, creator. Um, but we all worked together and it was so effortless. We all did our jobs. I, you know, I was producing, we, we, we had the director and, you know, I, I wanted the vision to, my hope was that it was a film that, especially during the times that we're going through right now, people could turn it on. And this is what I did, especially the first and second week after. I'd turn it on every morning and it would take me away. I would be totally, with this beautiful love story that I can identify with, that something that I would love to have. Um, so that is, that's what I wanted to make a love story. And it's beautiful. Uh, tell our audience where they can go to see it, David. Well, they, you can go online at YouTube um, uh, and uh, you go to the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge and you could look it up there and it's a, it's a five minute and so many second film and, and I think it'll wa warm your heart. And it's starting to, we're starting to submit to film festivals now, so cross fingers, you know. I, I, it's a beautiful film and it's very heartwarming 
And it's one of those things that, um, because it's just what, six minutes long, it, everybody has time in their day to watch it and it is uplifting. It will, it will lighten your load for the day and remind you. There is something about um, these two wonderful individuals that you're looking at that they, and how they're prioritizing their relationship that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. Uh, but I also like that you show that it's not always hearts and flowers and roses for at least a couple of seconds. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, so that we see that they also face challenges within their relationship. I, I just think it's a really beautiful, it's good storytelling. And I mean that in the best possible compliment because uh, that's what I love is good well, storytelling. And it, is. Yeah, it does. It definitely has levels to it, you know, yeah. and you know, even like I used to collect soundtrack albums and my favorite ones are the ones that have so many different levels to it. Exactly. And I, and I, I noticed the music and I was like, this is amazing music. Um, so uh, good, great job, not just good job, great job. And I encourage everybody to go and check that out. I want to now go look at the other films, but when, so I didn't know that Easter Souls did this every year. What time of year do they do this? Well, so our audience could be looking out for next year. Oh yeah, and everybody, anybody can join, you know, and and create their own work. Um, it usually happens in March, and this year it was pushed because of the the uh -huh. pandemic and the quarantine. But they decided to do an in in house kind of thing. Um, there you go. But check, go on. I think it's dis disabilityfilmchallenge.com, and you could check. I'll and they have all the films there, as well as what you can do to jump in and, and be in part of the family next this next year. There you go. Uh, and we're running out of time, so I wanna make sure I get to everything, but you mentioned that you had another pro project that you've been working on for a while. Um, talk to us a little bit about My Next Breath. <sighs> there you go. <laughs> I just, it's, it's a project that, uh, that is, it's sort of like my baby. And, mm -hmm. um, and I have been calling it that it's, it, it is my extended family. We, we started it 11 years ago, I think it is, which is a good number, 11, 11. Um, and it's still going. And, you know, for a while there, after, th after three years, it was just sort of like floating in air. And I said, this has to be, you know, we have gold in there. We have amazing people, a part of it, Jerry Jewell, uh, you know, I'm, I can list the whole cast, but I can't, you know, Dan, Danny, Danny Murphy was in it. And, um, you know, I, I, I could, you, you'll, you'll have to check it, check out the, the trailer, but it's, it's a film about stories, the stories that we all have. And what do you want to do with your next breath? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Oh, I was just going to say that, you know, um, some of these names may be unfamiliar to people, but We've, we've spent a lot of time on the show um, showcasing certain people who are um, individuals who may have an additional challenge, whether it's autism or other things, and they are artists and they want to be in the art world. And that they, we are of the mindset here on Autism Live that will, of course, will, of course, and they have a right to be whatever they want to be, including in the arts. But a lot of times, if you don't have an extra challenge, it's hard to be an artist in today's world. And when you do have extra challenges, there is a different load to carry that maybe I can't always understand. And so we have people on the show to talk about what the challenges were for them and how they over overcame them. And some of it is just, I think, from what I hear, is overcoming the preconceived notion of this idea of disability that oh. they can't do other things because of a disability. See, I don't even, uh, I, I, I see the person, I don't even think about the disability or quote the disability, we use that term, but I really see the talent that everybody has. And we have, I mean, you know, I mean, as we both know, and I, I've seen your show and I didn't say this at the beginning, but I've seen your show many times. And when you called me up, I was like, of course, oh my God, I would love to be on her show, you know? And we had uh, on Meet the Biz the other day that we filmed, which is coming up in a week or two, is Kobe Bird. Oh, Kobe Bird. You can, I, you're gonna, yes. you're gonna love the interview. It's, it's I know, fun, I will. it's fun. 
he's amazing. But I, but I, the reason why I said at the beginning, we need to clone you, David, is because I do think that that is the way you operate is that you're not looking for that. You're looking at the individual. But I think that Jerry Jewell is a perfect example that for people who may not know her, I mean, the first time I was ever introduced to Jerry Jewell was when she was on the facts of life a million years ago. And she came on in, in, you know, crutches and was a character on the show. And, and I remember going, what's happening? This is so incredible. I don't think this girl is acting being on the crutches. I think that this is the way she motors. And I was raised by a mom who uh, was on crutches. Mm. So for me, that was a moment in time. And then of course, Jerry went on to be a brilliant stand-up comedian, um, but, but I can't even imagine the challenges that she faced the first time she went to a casting call when people were like, I, I, you know, do you understand that you're here you know, to audition for something. Well, I think, I mean, she was like, I mean, as you know, she's just a powerhouse and my gosh, Norman Lear and Fern Field discovered her, put her on that show. And then she has, you know, done, I mean, she literally, talk about my next breath, she has breathed life into me to keep going. Um, and, and of course, Deadwood, she was on that for three years. I mean, she is a true and consummate artist and actress. Um, yes, and, and but a, but a pioneer. Uh, I mean, that has to be said, exactly. a pioneer, because she made it possible for people to stop and go, "Why not? Why not?" <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Why and not? Talk about talk about a star. I mean, she is a star, and you you see sometimes you see people on the star of the Walk of Fame, and you go, "Who?" who? But I mean, I mean, even I mean, talk about it. Who needs a star? But we won't get into that. But oh, I'll uh, petition for that. Uh, Absolutely. So you're focusing in my next breath on a lot of different actors who probably have a different story than a lot of what people have heard in life. But I think probably some of the most inspirational stuff there is. Oh uh, well, you know, it's inspirational in the and in the sense that we can identify with it the people yeah. watching it can say wow that reminds me of me or i've had a story like that you know bringing us all together saying you know we might have a little differences but we have different differences and similarities and that's what i love when i'm creating work and casting i love bringing in everyone i love i love working with with artist and talent and talent. But David, how do we make it so that everyone thinks like you do? I don't know. <laughs> I just, I'm, I, I, I just think about it. I just, I just do it. I just, I'm all about love. I can't, you know, all this, this, you know, this hatred or negative stuff that's going on in the world. I just, I'm like, what? Come on, people. Look, you know, take a breath. Listen yeah. to the heart and look at the amazing beauty that's all around us. And I, I believe that that is what's going to save us all, is to really feel the heart of us all, because we're all here together. Um, I really just see the positive, see the positive, I guess, and see the creative geniuses that we have right under our noses. And for those who are who have been afraid or who are afraid of differences. No, 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 no. It's just a little shift of the beauty of it all, the beauty of all of our differences and our similarities. Well, and I think for our audience who's watching, I think that there's a certain amount of it that we get, but um, if you wanna be able to see people who have already made that shift, that pivot and are doing, instead of talking about why can't we, who are already in the process of doing and have left that behind, um, you know, then I would suggest that you follow what David is doing. Mm. Um, we didn't really talk about, uh, you, my next breath is not available the whole thing yet, but we can watch the trailer. Where do we go to do that? You could see the trailer on, in fact, if you go to my website too, you could see the links to Honey Bunny, to Meet the Biz, to My Next Breath, and there's a trailer on there um, 
for each of them. I mean, I don't know when my next breath's going to come out. I'm just going with the flow on that one. You know, these documentaries sometimes I think take years. In fact, I think when Streisand did Yentl, it took I don't know how many years to finally get up. So, you know, when it comes out, it comes, it it'll be it. a perfect breath. It was worth it. Um, we also should say before we go, because uh, you mentioned that you work with, so you truly are collaborative and you work with so many different uh, organizations. We mentioned Joey Travolta, Inclusion Films. Yes, you nice mentioned one. Born to Act. I'm yeah. trying to think, oh, Actors for Autism. Yeah. Um, all these different organizations that you work with, but what you do, um, it doesn't pay for itself. And so you, uh, you for not my, the, the, um, Meet the Biz has uh, a place where people can make donations to keep the work that you're doing going. Do you want to take just a second to talk about where they can find yes, that? Yes, and thank you for that because I forget. You know, I just do my thing, um, but forget, oh yeah, I have to pay the, the captioning or the interpreters or this or that. And we have a GoFundMe uh, that will really help us out. It's a, a www.gofundme slash inclusive biz. I N C L U S I V E B I Z. So go to, <laughs> I think I spelled that right. So yeah, GoFundMe Inclusive Biz and just what, whatever you can do and, and you, you're, you, you could see all the stuff that we do and it just, it keeps us going. And I gotta say, you know, I'm always putting this out to our, our listeners that I know sometimes you're in a place where you're like, well, I don't have any money to donate. Um, and, and, you know, that isn't always the thing. Sometimes you could just share it on your social media because somebody you know has the money to donate to it. Or sometimes you go, I don't, I don't have $100 to give, but I have $10 to give. And the truth is that if everyone who watched this gave $10, then David would be able to continue doing these services for probably another year or two. Yeah. So um, it's it's about doing what you can do. And I know that everybody can do something to keep this work going. Because here's the truth, you guys. If we don't help support people like David, who has been supporting our community for all this time, they, they won't continue because they can't. Um, you know, there's somebody who's watching this that it hasn't occurred to them that they could be doing things like David is. And maybe if they see, oh, look, that's a viable thing and the community supports that, then they will also support. I don't think that, I, I think that you did it because it was your passion, uh, uh, but let's make it more people's passion. Well, it, it's my passion and I love it. And, and it, for, I, for, when I first started the GoFundMe, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't wanna do a GoFundMe, but then I'm so glad that I did because it got the message out there to what's going on. People said, I didn't know this was going on. And so it was great. And what was ni what's nice too, is we do have the umbrella nonprofit of Performing Arts Studio West. So some people say, hey, I wanna donate a little more. Is there a nonprofit we could go through? So we, we have that as well, which is so nice. Wonderful. So let's, uh, if they go to your website, is that the hub where they can find everything? Yes, the www.davidszimmerman.com. And what does the S stand for, David? Sexy. <laughs> I know it's such a thing. <laughs> it's such a thing in Hollywood I, uh, that people have the middle initial. Is it because somebody else had already in SAG had already taken David Zimmerman? Well, no, SAG. I have David Zimmerman, but there are a lot. There are a lot of David Zimmermans out there, and my mom kept on saying, "Why not use your middle name?" And I actually have two middle names: uh, David Shea Samuel Zimmerman, one from so each grandfather. Two so, S's. Two S's, but uh, you know, I you know uh, the S S. You know, I'd rather do David S stands for both, you know, everything. So, well, uh, we love it. We absolutely. Love it. So David S Zimmerman.com uh, go there to find all the things. If nothing else, you must go there today and watch honey buddy. And when it makes you feel better, go over and donate $5 or more over to the GoFundMe. Uh, um, so that David can continue doing what he's doing. And so when will the Kobe bird interview be out? You know, it, it uh, either next week or the following week. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. I, I'm actually two weeks ahead because I, when I first started all these interviews, I just like did maybe one or two a day. And then I finally w went, oh, I have to like take yes. a break. <laughs> Eat, sleep, yes, uh, all of those things. Yeah. 
Well, you know, it's, it's one of those funny things in life when, uh, you know, I was on the phone with Joey Travolta and he said, oh, you know, you've got to have him on the show. And I said, yes. And so we friended each other on Facebook and, uh, and you said your new favorite show on Netflix is Lock and Key. And I went, well, David, have you interviewed Kobe Bird? And you were like, well, I'm interviewing him tomorrow. And I went, okay, something's happening here. There's something, there's a convergence of something um, because Kobe is, is one of our family. Like I'm Kobe's mom is one of my best friends. She's my best. I tell you there, that whole family is just gorgeous and what a joy it is to connect with them. And, and Kobe is so talented and, uh, and Joey, again, I just have to say, Joey is a blessing too. And, and, and I have an interview with Joey and you could hear more about it, but we are heart brothers. Tell us why. I already know why, but tell us why. We are heart brothers because we both both had a heart attack on the same day. I know it's like not wood. It's like sometimes I am I still here? But um, anyway, that's the short version of it. But I mean, not the same day, like years apart, the same, probably the same time. Who knows? But, I was I was just gonna say, have you figured out what time it was? Like, was there some something happening? Were you both watching something on the news? Because that'll do it to you. <laughs> no, I woke up and I felt pressure, and I was like, going, this is not acid reflux. Um, and then late the next day, I think I somebody texted me when I was in the hospital and said, "Did you hear Joey had one?" I went, "What?" So it was, it's amazing how you know we all we're all connected. Like you said, the convergence is happening, and I really think there is a strong convergence in the world. Um, and that's not this foo foo foo. Like you know, I think it's true. I think the energy of love. You could see what hate does and you could see what love does. So, hey, you know, get get the stuff that makes the trees grow and the flowers and yes. Let's take that choose breath. That. Let's choose that. Well, I honestly would like to clone you. And I'm so glad uh, that, uh, you know, that now the convergence has happened. And so you've been on the show and now you're, fr- we're friends for life. I know you may choose otherwise, but that's too bad. Oh, no. friends, and, I should, and you're going to be on my show soon, aren't you? I, I have nothing to add to that, oh. but uh, I'm always willing, but I have nothing to add to that. But, um, you know, so, and so excited to see your interview with Kobe because we absolutely adore him and we love uh, Lock and Key too. And if any of you have not watched Lock and Key, I don't know what you've been doing in this COVID madness because it's there and it's available to you. And it's so and it's, fun. And they have started, um, I think this week they start season two um, that they're filming. So that's a very good thing. Because if you've watched it, you know, I'm not giving anything away, but you're going to want to see season two. And I won't Um, give anything away about our uh, interview too, because there's a little surprise here and there too. Is there? (laughs) Well, I can't wait to tune in to see because we absolutely adore him and his whole family. Um, So wonderful. But people should be checking out your other interviews. Check out the Julie Newmar that I was talking about. Check out the interview with Joey Travolta. How about Elaine Hall? Jerry Jewell, see Happy what's Buckley. happening with her. I mean, come on. Uh, and I, I want to come to class with Lainey Kazan. Stop it. Oh like, my are God. you kidding me? I did, adore her. Oh, she's amazing. Did you see her interviews yet? I did not watch that yet. That would have, I wouldn't even have been able to talk to you. I would have been, <laughs> I, 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 I would have plotsed. I adore her. I absolutely adore her. Uh, and if you don't know who Lainey Kazan is, you do. You just don't realize that that's who she is. But she, uh, you know, um, probably the thing that people would most know her for is My Greek Wedding. She's the mom. And she is so freaking funny in that. She puts me out. I can't, I can't even. She has uh, such a history. and Yeah, she's just, but, but has done so many things and is one of the funniest actresses that there is. I'm a huge, huge fan of hers. All right. I promised that I was going to let you go before this. And then I kept you too long. That's okay. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it too. Thank you so much. So go, everyone go right now, davidszimmerman.com. Make sure that you watch Honey Bunny and then support what this gentleman is doing because it is it is what we need more of in our community. It's what we need more of on our planet. Thank you, David. And everybody go check out Meet the Biz. Hey. 
thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.